Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new edition of Family Issues. In this episode, we'll be talking about parental rewards and the redirection of children's behavior. The fact that parents should not have a, a fixed um, frame of mind about uh, children. The importance of separating um, a child and behavior uh, and knowing that behind each behavior there is a positive uh, intent. What about uh, what to reward uh, and how uh, to reward and also uh, how to punish or how to redirect uh, a child's behavior to be uh, more uh, accurate. Um, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says uh, in the hadith, uh, tell your children to play when they are seven years old and smack them if they do not pray uh, when they are ten and separate them in their beds. Sadaqa uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, Allah azza wa jal says uh, in the Holy Quran, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ uh, so, uh, in this uh, episode, we'll be talking about uh, rewarding uh, good behavior and redirecting a bad behavior, the definition of a bad behavior, which naturally differs according to the age category uh, and uh, perhaps to the culture itself, uh, um, and uh, knowing that uh, we should give alternative uh, behaviors uh, to those uh, bad ones, how to encourage good behavior, these uh, are some uh, of the topics we'll be discussing in this episode entitled uh, Parental Rewards and Redirection of Children's uh, Behavior. We will be happy to receive uh, your phone calls on the numbers uh, appearing uh, on the screen. Uh, if you have any question to our uh, distinguished guests uh, with us here uh, in the episode or uh, uh, you can also email us if you want on familyissues at hoda.tv uh, for your comments and uh, suggestions for uh, family issues. So let's get rolling, a short break and when we come back inshallah the discussion will start immediately. Stay with us. As this, what is the sunnah? Sunnah is actually the method or the way or the practice of Salah Salah. In this new edition, we will tackle many sunnah. And I'll start, inshallah, with the sunnah of the wudu. That we Muslim, as we also commanded by Allah and the Messenger of Allah to take care of the Quran, follow the Quran, and implement the Quran, we also being commanded by Allah and the Messenger of Allah to implement and follow the Sunnah. Some of the people said, what does it make different whether I drink with my right hand or right hand? The difference is you are disobeying Rasulullah So it is also a very recommended Sunnah. One of the obligation on me as a Muslim toward my brothers is to visit him when he's sick. You know, believe it or not, Rasulullah sallallahu taught us everything, even how do we go to the toilet. The sunnah of sneezing that when you sneeze, you should cover your mouth and nose with your cloth or a handkerchief or a tissue or anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy for his messengership for the revelation to be revealed this is not for the human beings to make that decision if a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely truthfully asking for forgiveness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive we have as Muslims a duty and that is to recite the book of Allah to ponder over the verses the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and to act according to the Quran. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. But it who would this mercy will be for? And the Prophet ﷺ was sent to all mankind. So the Ummah or the people of the Prophet ﷺ or all mankind since the time of the Prophet ﷺ till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Quran? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. We have uh, with us here uh, Mr. Hisham Hassan and uh, he is a uh, neuro uh, semantics uh, trainer. Uh, thank you very much uh, Mr. You. Hisham for being with us. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakum wa khair. Where do you want to get us started? Okay, so uh, I think we should uh, start before speaking about uh, rewards and how to re redirect behavior is uh, the parent itself. Um, uh, in a lot of cases, parents have uh, certain frames of mind about children that uh, really contribute to when they label a certain behavior as bad or as good. Uh, so, for example, a, a parent with a frame of mind that uh, children are naughty, for example, or a, pr a parent with a, with, a, with a frame of mind uh, that children don't know what's best for them, and, and so on. Uh, when they start looking at the child's behavior, they'll always uh, interpret it in uh, the same way that they see it. So then mm -hmm. a child may do a lot of great things, but at the end of the day, it's the way it's registering in the, in, uh, in the mind of the parent is that it's, uh, this is not good, or this is so, and this is so. And so uh, a lot of great opportunities of, uh, that we can capture from child's behavior are, are lost, and uh, instead of rewarding them on the good things, we, we may be actually... Um, um, in so, some way just punishing the, the good things that they are capable of simply mm -hmm. because we have this frame of mind or this way that we think about children and childhood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this frame of mind is, uh, is usually associated with, with cultures, with, with different uh, cultures? Uh, totally, yeah. Um, it's, it's related to a lot of things. So uh, it could be related to culture. It could be related to the way the person was, was uh, brought up. Mm. So if, if, if he was brought up, for example, being told that uh, uh, as a child he's this, 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 and this, mm. when he becomes a parent, this is exactly the way that he's going to be thinking about his children. Mm. And, and therefore, seeing them from the eyes that brought him up. Mm. So if these eyes weren't seeing properly, then uh, it's going to be taken out on, on the child, uh, him or herself. Right. Now, th the frame of mind again. So uh, uh, th the first thing is that we must know that children are smarter than, than, than what we think and, uh, uh, and that it's normal for them to be naughty because they are simply t uh, children, uh, correct? Yeah, and, and we, can, we can use a different word instead of because once we say naughty, it's, it always registers yeah. as, as bad and disruptive mm. and so on. So we, we, instead mm. of calling them naughty, we can just call them active. Right. So uh, if, if, we, if we don't call them naughty and call them active, then the next thing we think about, so how can I use this activity or mm. where can I use this activity so that mm. they um, benefit from it rather than mm. it being... Um, uh, a stone in their uh, development. Right. And so, so. We, we should never underestimate their intelligence or their sensitivity as well, right? Because they are very, very sensitive. That is true. What, one, of, one of the biggest uh, mistakes that we parents do is that we fail to, to realize how um, attentive children are. Mm. Uh, children notice oh, everything. Mm. They, they notice our, our, our gestures, they notice uh, our, our mood changes and so on. on although it doesn't show because they don't know how to express it, they can really sense very, very well mm -hmm. what's going on and understand what's going on and understand mm -hmm. what's behind uh, mm -hmm. behavior sometimes and what's behind the words of the, of the parent. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes them very, very flexible. I mean, uh, tell, tell a child that you're not uh, giving him a certain thing like a, a, a sweet or a, a, or, mm -hmm. or a reward or whatever, and mm -hmm. they'll find somehow, some way to, to get around us you know, us with the, with the big minds and the mm. wisdom and all that. Mm. They'll find a way. They're flexible enough and they're sensitive enough to mm. find a way around it. So, mm. 
Right. They are uh, as, as, smart. either to get the same thing they wanted or maybe to get something, or an alternative for themselves. They could find alternatives yes. for themselves as well. Yes. Uh, uh, in, uh, in many times, and uh, it's amazing, subhanAllah, that um, when we talk about, again, children's sensitivity, because I think this is a very important point, is that a lot of children, uh, or some of them, know when to when to stop uh, if they are making noises they <laughs> if they're disrupting um, their father's work or, or getting on the nerves of their mom many of them know when to, yes. when to stop they exactly they and, and this is something else uh, what do we actually start but they want to get the maximum usually i'm sorry they want to get the maximum so they want to get yeah or yeah. don't we all i mean it's, right. it's human nature that right. we always want to get right. the maximum of uh, of yeah. everything but uh, th this uh, this leads us to to what what actually can we call uh, bad behavior? See, when before before labeling something bad behavior, and and after checking our frames of mind about children and, and childhood, uh, we need to make this check if the behavior that's happening from the child is actually a problem. Mm. So, for example, in some cultures, uh, a child asking his father uh, in a certain way, asking him questions about uh, a decision or something that he did or, or so on, mm. is, uh, is regarded as, uh, as bad behavior, mm. as, uh, as insulting for the father. Mm. In, in other culture, the same questioning and the same way of, of trying to find out wh why is the father might doing be praised. this might be praised and actually encouraged. Mm. So, so before, be, before actually starting to, 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 to call this behavior my child is doing mm. uh, as bad, uh, is it really bad? Mm. Uh, and, and why is it bad? We need to think about this. Uh, why should we call it bad? Um, an example that um, I, I may give of, of my little daughter, who's probably in front of the TV right now. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Up and down. Mm. <laughs> so um, um, I, have, I have a very um, important book to me. All right? This book is, uh, is, is, is my whole life. And I keep it in, 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 in good place. And, and just this one time I forgot it and uh, she found it. Uh, so the second thing we know, the, the book is full of uh, pens and drawings and scribbles mm. and all kinds of things. And so my first, my first reaction when I saw it was I was sad. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I gave some thought to, to what she might be thinking while doing uh, this behavior does she mean really to to mess up my book or is there something else so the the way i i believe it it happens that sh she regards drawing or scribbling in, in her case as something that's very nice and right. that's beautiful so mm -hmm. so basically she was thinking i'm gonna make this book nice for daddy right um, because she knows this is h how important that book uh, yes. is for you so, so she m maybe she was also she wanted to be a part of it she exactly. wants to be so, so this is this this is something else that happened too. Is uh, when she was a little younger, uh, around two years old, I used to sit and work with my laptop, yeah. and uh, she she'd get really disruptive and just start making all kinds of noises and mm. sitting down on the uh, and crying for mm. no reason. That's that's what I was thinking, mm. uh, crying for no reason and stopping me from work and and so on. And I was so into my work, I didn't give it thought. So I'd just say. Uh, okay, well, I need to work now. Please just quiet down and so on. Well, until her mother uh, came uh, came along, and uh, very very simply, she she brought she brought her a piece of paper, mm. a pen. She sat her beside me, mm. and she just went on drawing. Mm. So basically, what she wanted to do was not disrupt me as much as she wanted to share the moment with me. Indeed. So when we understood her intention, we were able to redirect her behavior Very in a positive point, again, way. Very important point, again, knowing that uh, uh, behind uh, each behavior of a child there is a positive intent. Exactly. And so we, we should search for that positive uh, uh, intent. Um, uh, we, we have with us now uh, uh, Mr. Hisham and dear brothers and sisters, uh, Sheikh Haytham al-Haddad, uh, renowned uh, uh, Islamic scholar, uh, uh, calling us uh, uh, from the United Kingdom. Kingdom. Uh, Salamu alaikum, uh, Sheikh Haytham. Uh, Jazakumullah khair. Uh, thank you for uh, talking to us on family issues. And Sheikh Haytham, could you tell us um, uh, Islam's view on uh, parental rewards and redirection of children's behavior? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, I think you can hear the adhan here uh, mm. coming from London. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. From Al Muntad al Islami in London. Mm, okay. uh, I don't know if you can hear me clearly because yes, the adhan has just done. Yes, we can. We can, Sheikh Haytham. 
Okay. Uh, this topic is a very important topic, uh, and uh, thank you, Jazakallah, sir, for giving me the chance to share a few ideas. Which is that? You know, when we talk about reward and punishment from an Islamic perspective for children, we always remember the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallam, where he said, مروهم في الصلاة لسبع وضربوهم عليها لعشر وفرقوا بينهم في المضاجع. Command them to pray when they are at the age of seven, and smack them if they don't pray when they are at the age of 10. And the scholars use this hadith as an indication when you can have like a physical punishment to the children and the best way to deal with the children. And many scholars say that it is not allowed to have a physical punishment for the children if they are less than 10 years. Right of age. Mm -hmm. No physical punishment, according to many scholars, if the children are less than 10 years of age, because they say that the Salah is the most important practice, Islamic practice, yet the Prophet ﷺ did not allow us to physically uh, punish our children if they are at the age of 10, if they didn't pray. Yes. So if, we, if they missed other things, other practices, or maybe misbehave, uh, etc. Then, for sure, it is not allowed. Out, it is not allowed for us to punish them physically. Very clear. And that this is a very important one. And yes. they said that uh, if you look at the hadith, the hadith of the prophet says, "Muruhum When they are at the age of tamir, which is around seven years of age, when they are able to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong, generally speaking, then at that time we start to discipline them by giving them orders. Now, they said before that, what do we rely on? They said before that, don't give them commandments, but focus more on having a role model. Yes. Having a role model and maybe encouragement, encouragement to do other things. But direct commandments, when they are able to understand those direct commandments. And they also said one interesting thing, that if you have the role model for the child from the age of maybe three, uh, two or three, up to the age of seven, and then from the age of seven, you started giving uh, direct instructions to your uh, children regarding what is right, what is wrong, what they should do, what sh they shouldn't do, then it is likely that they don't need any kind of punishment. Mm. And that's why the Prophet says, and, and if they don't pray, then you can smack them. Because if you keep, if you were setting the role model for them from a very young age, mm. and then you started to remind them from the age of seven all the way until of the age of ten, yet they did not pray at the age of ten, it means that there is something wrong and you need to go to the uh, physical punishment or the the, uh, the last resort. <clears throat> yes, and 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 this is this is really a very important way of disciplining children uh, throughout those different stages. Right. However, if I may say something, our problem now uh, is not any yeah, those stages. Our problem is we are unable to set a role model for our children. Mm. because of deficiency in ourselves mm. and also the society around us, the schooling uh, system, etc. Mm. I am, as a father, uh, not the only person who is educating or giving tarbiyah to my child. Uh, he goes to the school, he spends seven or six hours in the school. Mm. He mixes with his uh, friends, uh, with neighbors, with other relatives. He mm. maybe watches TV. Right. So there are many other factors that influence his tarbiyah. Mm. So that typical model that Islam provided us maybe needs to be readjusted in our situation now yes. uh, in order to be practical because we cannot be just idealistic mm. while the, the, the environment around it's us is not that uh, perfect uh, uh, environment. Right. So in this case, what can we do? Yes. The, the, the scholar said, we can take from this hadith that, in, that Islam is 
in fa- is not in favor of punishing the children from a very young age. Uh, Islam is in favor of using other methods in disciplining the children. Yes. Maybe focusing on reward, maybe, maybe focusing on setting values for the children and letting them rely on themselves, uh, be dependent on themselves, mm-hmm. have confidence in uh, yes. themselves. Right. And we see this in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was dealing with young children. You know, Anas ibn Malik, uh, he served the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for over 10 years. And he said, and his mother sent him when he was very young to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, he said, Anas ibn Malik, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never told me off, never told me for something that I did do, why did you do it? Same. And never told me something for I, something that I didn't do, mm. why didn't you do it? Mm. Look at this, this is amazing. Mm. As if the Prophet ﷺ was empowering mm. Anas ibn Malik and letting him take decisions by himself, of course, giving him the guideline. Mm. Of course, this is a very ideal situation, right. I agree, yet it gives us an indication of the best model of Serbia, and then we need maybe to adjust that model uh, up to our circumstances and up to our ability. Beautiful example. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh Haytham Al-Haddad, renowned uh, Islamic scholar uh, from uh, the uh, United Kingdom. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh. Mr. Hisham, we have with us now uh, a caller from Nigeria, okay. uh, uh, Brother Bello. Salamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Bellows. Thank you for calling Family Issues. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly, Brother. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. So, so, assalamu alaikum, my brother. I don't know what to address him. Is it a sheikh or doctor or whatever? I don't, I don't really know. Yes, we, we're now talking with uh, Mr. Hisham Hassan, and he is uh, a neurosemantics uh, trainer. We're talking about the uh, uh, rewards parents give to their children and how to redirect uh, children's uh, behavior. Yes, yes, yes. I've been following you. My, my question is this. Uh, I have four children, all boys. Yes. Bismillah, um, Allah. My question is, yes, uh, well, the elderly one is 12 years, and the last one is uh, about 11 months now. Mm-hmm. Barakallahu lakum. Two, yes, two of them are very temperamental, especially the second one and the last one. Mm-hmm. If they are doing something, you stop them, they will start beating you, they will start crying here and there, they, they don't want to stop, you know. And if you depict something, you remove it from them, they will start throwing things on the ground and stuff like that. So they're very temperamental. So I don't know, maybe if the brother can help me and maybe give me some. Y- yes, he will. Uh, 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 but Brother Bello, before you hang up, before you, we, you hang up, we, we want to know more details from you, maybe, so uh, Mr. Hisham can give you an accurate uh, answer. Okay, no problem. I'm holding on. So uh, exactly what happens and when does it happen? What I'm saying is uh, okay. the, the children are very temperamental. Mm. Two okay. of them out of the four. Mm. And the last one, if he is playing, he picks something maybe that can hurt him, or he picks something that, like my hand said now, if I collect it, he will start crying, he will start beating me up. If I give him back the hand, he will throw it on the floor. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. You understand? Yes, we, we, we understand. And, and, yes, and the other one is like nine years old. Mm. If he's doing something, you stop him, you start crying. There's no amount of comfort or whatever you give him that you stop crying. You, he just don't want to be stopped when he's doing, he's doing things. And the things he's doing are, are bad, you know. There are no things that I can, allow, I can allow him to continue. Mm. Mm, so I'm just speaking maybe advice from my brother whether he can maybe help me. With yeah, that, yes, sure, yes. I'll do my best. And 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 barakallahu laka fi him, brother Bello. Bismillah, mashaAllah, barakallahu laka fi awladik. Okay, Mr. Hisham. All of them are temperamental, okay. and Brother Bello gave us, uh, you know, n- nice examples about the handset uh, and the baby. Okay, uh, so so what I what I understood is uh, he's he's uh, experiencing uh, challenges uh, as far as uh, keeping their mood constant. They 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 their mood fluctuates a lot. Yes, and so they ask for something and uh, they cry for it, and when they get it, they'll throw it away and. 
and, and the so baby, on. Yeah, the baby, he talked about the baby, the 11-month-old baby. Okay. But obviously there's competition. I mean, it's a boy. It's okay. boys, four boys. So there must okay. be competition for the love of the father, the love of the mother, for, for supremacy, for... Uh, uh, That's right. There's always competition between the boys. Well... Uh, First thing, first thing we need to uh, to do, and I'll just I'll I'll answer in first in a general way, and then yes. we'll get to yes. the specifics. But uh, first thing we have to do is to separate uh, between the child and and the child's behavior, uh, which is very very important because whenever we we start thinking that child is bad uh, because of uh, because he's doing uh, bad things, then uh, we've already put him into. Uh, a certain uh, frame that he cannot uh, mm. step out of. Mm. Uh, we've already l outlined the future for him, mm. basically. And vice versa. If, uh, if, if we keep versa. telling the, the, the child, you're good, you're brave, you're frank, you're courageous, uh, usually this lives up with him. Of course, of course. Or her, of course. Yes, mm. yes, definitely. Mm. And, um, and, and that's why we need to always encourage Even if they do the what we interpret as, as bad things. But exactly, yes. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's and that's why that's why it's very important to separate the the child from the behavior that uh, that he or she uh, mm -hmm. does. Uh, now, and um, a practical way to do this, for example, or th uh, that we use in uh, in our field, um, children are very very imaginative. All right, and so we can use their imagination to to help them out. So if if a kid starts doing something and he labels himself, so this kid was actually doing uh, some very bad behavior, and and he kept on telling himself, uh, "I'm naughty for doing this. I'm naughty for doing this. I'm bad boy and bad boy and bad boy." And so uh, we 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 brought the child over and we started having this little talk with him. And uh, so the first thing we said, we 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 drew him a frame that's not there, but just a frame uh, in front of him, and said. Okay, so when, when you do this, what do you call that? And so the child started wondering, uh, okay, so I call that uh, so-and-so. I call that bad behavior. I call that being aggressive. And, and you should let the child just bring out whatever uh, words that he actually has. All right? And so he ha you have this frame right in front of him. Mm. And, and but it's okay, not him. But it's not him. Mm. So this is mm. the, the very important mm. thing. So he starts developing an awareness mm. that there could be a behavior separate from the person. Mm. So the person is good. And that's what we start by telling them is mm. that, okay, so I love you regardless mm. of what you do. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're my valued son, daughter. Uh, I love you to death and all that. Uh, but what, what would you call this, doing mm. this, what do we call that? Mm. And so the child starts bringing out his own, okay, so we call this, this, and this, and this. And the child would want to distance uh, him or, or herself from, from this frame or, or, exactly. or, or this act later exactly. on. Because X is, uh, uh, is bad or, or, or Y is, uh, is bad, not him, not her, exactly. but the, the story. The story, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's why while doing this we need to clarify expectations too so mm. when 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 mm. someone when this behavior is done mm. what what are the consequences what happens mm. after that mm. so the consequences for example uh, okay so i'll get to sit for two minutes without doing anything or i'll, I'll sit in a corner or that's the commonly known as the timeout. The right? timeout, yeah. For, for, the, for, for the kids. Yeah. Allow us, uh, uh, Mr. Hisham and yeah. dear brothers and sisters, to take a, a short a break out. here. Yeah, a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> and come back and continue your discussion. Stay with us. You are never alone. You are never alone. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Ask Hoda. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Huda. I have uh, two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Saleh from Egypt, his father, as the way and he asked about how can he help him very good question can they give a zakat to any of the dawah sisters the ibadah or the act of worship 
is a part of the unity of worship. It has to be paid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the guidance of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. back from the time out. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, uh, Mr. Hisham, back to Brother Bello's question, if you will uh, okay. allow me. So, so, so the first thing we were, uh, we're uh, uh, talking about is um, uh, separating the child from, uh, from the child's behavior. And there was the example of the frame. We can draw this flame, frame in, in air. Uh, we can virtually. We can, virtually, mm. yeah. Mm. We, can, we can use a pen and paper. Um, mm. I mean, we could get pretty creative uh, with it as long as we're separating whatever is being done uh, from, uh, from the child. Mm. So this is the first part. Second part we need to understand is that behind every child's behavior is a positive, some kind of positive intent. And uh, what we mean by positive intent here is not the manifestation of the behavior because uh, a child may have uh, a positive intention of wanting to feel secure for example, which is everyone's right. But the manifestation of, of, of the sense of security may come out in bullying. So the, so the child may be displaying very, very aggressive mm. behavior, being very aggressive with his peers, but actually it's not that he's a bad kid, it's not mm. that he's crazy or, or whatever in the mind, mm. but uh, there's that positive intent uh, behind it. Or like the example of, of Maria, to feel my, my daughter that, uh, yes. that I gave, that she wanted the, the, the book to look beautiful. And yes. so she, she went on and, and scribbled uh, on it. Maybe she, she was jealous from the book as well. Yeah, maybe exactly, because I spent a lot of time with yeah. it. <laughs> mm. uh, so maybe, maybe a, a, a parent may actually think this. Mm. So when, when, mm. when he sees this book, uh, she wants to keep me away from my books because she wants to spend <laughs> some more time with, from me. And of course, this, this movie keeps on playing and, mm. and uh, just building up anger. Mm. And so uh, what, what Brother Bello uh, needs to do is, is to first start trying to find out what are they trying to, to get? Are they trying to get attention mm. by, by this? Do they, do they need his attention in, mm. in one way or the other? Mm. Are they trying to, to experience security? Mm. Are they trying to express themselves? Mm. Are they uh, trying to express that uh, the, the, there's a first uh, certain need that is, that is not fulfilled? Because when, when a child or w when, a, when a person in general, but especially when children start displaying a certain behavior, it's because they don't have an alternative or they don't have another resource that they mm. can use. Mm. So uh, our human nature, if we're given more than one option, we'll always go for the best. Mm. We'll always go for the best mm. uh, for us. So uh, not having or, or having this kind of behavior that is labeled as bad or disruptive mm. means that they're not given alternative. Mm. So I'll, go, I'll get back to the, to, the, to the story of Maria again. Uh, when, when she was disruptive while I'm working, once she was given an alternative, she she took it and mm. she started drawing mm. and the stopped crying. Mm. Yeah, mm. so um, I, I could have had uh, temper tantrums about her disrupting my work and so on. Mm. Uh, but what 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 really worked was giving her choice. Mm. Right, uh, the, the, uh, a very important point again here, uh, Mr. Hisham, the the alternative. So could you tell us about ways to give our children uh, um, uh, alternative? Uh, um, uh, an alternative for, for a certain uh, uh, behavior. Okay, well, the, the, there's no... Parents need to understand that the, the, there is no magic recipe at the end of the day and that they'll have to spend time, they mm. have to spend effort, mm. uh, they'll, they'll make mistakes, uh, but as long as they're focused on their child's development, all will, will be well. So uh, I was, uh, the, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was, uh, I was leaving the house and some kids had uh, uh, Pepsi bottles, glass Pepsi bottles. And what they wanted to do is to, to throw them and, and so that they'll make a lot of noise. And, and they're around 10 or 12 years old, and, uh, which would have been a disaster because a lot of people could have got uh, hurt mm. from, from, these, uh, uh, from these bottles. And so I had two choices. I, I could have went there and, and to told them off. Go, so you can't do this. This is bad. And, and if you do this, blah, blah, blah. And so I did it, but that's not what I did. I went over 
and I told them, uh, hey, how, how are you doing? And they're like, uh, we're fine. So they started thinking I'm going to, you know, tell them off. I tell them, mm. hey, would you like me to show you uh, a different way that you can make a lot of noise and make a big explosion? But in the same time, you're not going to hurt anyone by the glass that you're going to, to throw. And it's going to be way safer and, than and, what and you're And they adhered. Oh, of course. Oh, beautiful. So, so Because of the alternative. Yeah. Uh, a b b beautiful story. Mr. Hisham, we have okay. with us now Umar Abdullah okay. from uh, Nigeria. All right. Um, Salaamu Alaikum. And thank you for calling uh, uh, Family Issues. Allah. Um, my question is, Islamically, it's haram to draw pictures, huma, uh, human pictures or pictures that have life in them. The Prophet said, you are going to blow life on them on the day of judgment. So my question is, in school, they used to teach children how to draw their souls or what have you. So in this case, how are you going to do? What are you going to do? Not only children... Even adults are asked maybe when they are doing sign art or something like that, they will ask them to draw their self. So how are you going to tell the children it's not good or they shouldn't do it? Because in school they ask them to do, and you maybe you tell the children the hadith, so they think um, it is not good and you are asking them to do it. So that's my question. All right. Uh, did you get it, uh, Mr. Hisham? Okay, so, uh, so wha what, I, what I understood is that uh, uh, she sees that uh, drawing is haram, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that uh, so, so it wouldn't be uh, mm -hmm. possible to, mm -hmm. to use it with children. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if... Uh, thank, thank you, Umm Abdullah. Thank you, Umm Abdullah, thank yes. Uh, so uh, I believe that the, the, the according to one of the schools uh, of Islam, the, the, the haram drawing would be, for example, drawing uh, uh, full uh, human beings or so, which is debatable. Um, of course, we're not a fatwa yes. program here. So, uh, but Umar Abdullah, of course, if, if, yeah. if you want a question uh, about this, about the fatwa itself, please call Ask Huda, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Salah, on uh, Ask uh, Huda for the fatwa uh, itself. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Isha. And so the, the drawing that we were talking about as far as the frames is a drawing that's, that's not real. It's just in, in mm. air. It's just using imagination so that uh, the kid mm. would separate mm. between uh, two things. Mm. So that's for uh, Umar Abdullah. To, uh, to continue with what we were saying. Um, the alternative. So I went, yeah, I, mm. went, I went to them and I told them, so if I can show you a way that's mm. basically that's way more fun than what you're doing, uh, mm. w w would you like that? And so they got excited, yeah, because they want, they're going to see something fun. And so I, 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 I told them how to, uh, to make a very, very simple uh, chemical reaction by putting uh, uh, vinegar over um, uh, baking powder in a plastic bottle. And w when, you th when you throw it away, uh, you know, a fire hits something, makes a really big explosion it's and it's not dangerous and it's not dangerous it's it's a lot of fun mm. so guess what they did mm. they they put they put the glass the mm. the, the bottles uh, to the side mm. and they went and and for the alternative mm. um it wasn't at the top of my head when when i when i went to them mm. uh, but it came as i was uh, speaking to them which is mm. important that um we shouldn't get to the shortest resort mm. of don't do this or punishing and uh, and mm. so on because it is easier. Mm. I mean, uh, the p uh, punishment or physical uh, physical punishment does stop the behavior. Mm. But at the end of the day, is it sustainable? So is it is it is it it stopped now? But is it going to stop forever? Uh, Probably not. It, and uh, and this uh, is and this is mm. the the. The, the, the problem with, with physical punishment, of course, outside of the context of al hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm yeah. not talking about this, uh, but, uh, but what physical punishment do is, is just, it does is just like um, it gives this temporary uh, solution. Right. But at the end of the day, did the, did the kid change? No. And, uh, and again, uh, um, uh, allow us to, to get back to this, sure. uh, uh, um, uh, Mr. Hisham, after getting in uh, Sister Sabah from Canada. Okay. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum and thank you for calling uh, Family Issues. Wa Alaikum as Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh and Wa Iyakum. It's a great show, Alhamdulillah. My question, brother, is my my daughter is right now, to, uh, to, uh, third, she'll be entering her 13th very soon in a couple of months. Yes. Alhamdulillah, I have uh, guided them to reading Islamic books 
and you know reading about sahabas and and things like that Excuse but uh, now uh, sh- uh, she's already doing her hips but the problem is that the girls that she's coming in with the bus they read books like harry potter mm. and you know those ghost stories and haunted mm. books mm. now i i i redirected them to the islamic stories and i told them read it but when they sit with their peers they feel that you know we are lagging behind they are talking because they are watching movies we don't watch movies they are reading books i i explain to them that is haram and it but it it keeps coming back how it's do difficult. i change that attitude where they they do not feel that you know it's not it's, it's this is not this reading is not good and instead direct them to having good books like i have my own library too but right so they still they attracted towards that more than this yes naturally it is this this is difficult you have three daughters uh, um sabah you said no i have two daughters yes. one is uh, uh 13? actually i have three daughters uh, i have a niece but she's like my daughter so in case you can say i have three daughters and yes. uh, uh, the elder one is doing it the middle one is getting into it the youngest one is reading she follows the other two so they are reading books uh, but the elder one is a more of a problem with a harry potter and stuff like yes. like ghost stories and haunted just uh, saying we are not reading bad books this is only haunted and ghost stories we are yeah, reading indeed indeed how old is she the 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 elder one the elder one will be entering into her 13th april so she's 12 years old right now all right barakallahu Uh, uh, lucky uh, Jamie, and thank you very much, uh, 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 Sister Sabah from uh, from Canada, Miss um, Hashem. A difficult situation, and, okay. and there's nothing wrong with these books, right? Uh, well, uh, this is this is up to the parent, of course, to or, mm. or um, to whatever the the culture is to decide mm. whether the book is is good or not. But um, the way I like to think about it is. Um, I wouldn't have a problem uh, throwing my own daughter uh, into a swimming pool mm. or a sea mm. as long as I give her the, the, the tools by which she can, she can swim. So if I teach her how to swim, I can then uh, do, uh, do whatever. Um, what, what I think the, 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 or what I would do, and this is of course my, my opinion, is I would not uh, at all try to ban them from, from these books mm. because what the banning will do is just... Uh, build up more motivation inside of them uh, to read these books mm. so what are we left so with? that could always can be do? a balance right i mean i mean it's great that she is making them read religious books and, okay. and, and stories about sahaba yeah but that could be a balance for instance I there mean, could be a they, balance they could and both? what i meant by the swimming and the mm. sea and the swimming is if if she gives them the tools of of cr- how to critically think mm. all right then she can give them any book and they'll read it mm. and they'll still have and they'll have these tools by which mm. they can um, see if the quality of the book so is this according to uh, to to what i believe or not mm. you could give them a task she can give them mm. a task who's like okay so why are you reading this book why don't you pin uh, pinpoint out the things that are according to uh, mm. the stories of sahaba mm. Mm. and things that are different Beautiful so idea. this way, yeah, mm. this way mm. she set this frame in their mind mm. that they're that, that they're gonna look. Okay, so w- what do we have that's similar, mm. or what do we have that's different? Mm. So of course, automatically anything that we point out that's different, mm. we'll, we will start putting it to the side and, mm. and not taking. From and it. maybe something could be different, but not necessarily contradicting. So exactly, uh, and, and we exactly, have and that's mm. that's the very important part. Well, mm. actually, first thing, and maybe this would be to all of the the Islamic writers, we need books like Harry Potter, <laughs> you know, right. to to that right. that are that are uh, just right. an interesting for kids, and mm. and they'd like to read it, and 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 so on. Very true. So. Um, uh, now about um, when to reward and and how to reward. Uh, this is also a, a critical issue because some parents. Uh, um, while others punish their kids for everything they do and they don't, others reward their children for everything they do and they don't, and they keep rewarding them day in and day out, and, and then they become spoiled. Right. Uh, so, when to exactly uh, 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 make a reward, and and uh, and and the magnitude of uh, of that reward does it have to be proportionate with the behavior, with success, and 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 how consistent should we be on on okay. this? So we have to be uh, very careful about the kind of rewards that we that we give our children, because 
if if as as you said, if we if we start giving them, for example, chocolate for everything they do, so whatever they do, something they get a chocolate, 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 chocolate. What we're doing is we're building a lot of meanings to a very material object mm. uh, that the children, when they grow up, they'll have a very very hard time separating this meaning from. Mm. From from the, the chocolate the equals happiness then chocolate uh, chocolate equals happiness mm. and then we'll have um, I think I think this age is one of the the the, the, the ages that we had the most um, child obesity problems and, which one uh, which age uh, this age we're in oh, okay uh, we okay. have a lot of uh, very very bad cases of, of mm. child uh, obesity right very it's true. because the way that that parents start. Uh, Framing the reward is that the reward is uh, equals chocolate or equals sweets and and so on, and and children or humans in general are always looking for happiness. So whenever they're looking for happiness, guess where they're where they're going to go to the candy store, mm. uh, which is not a good thing. Mm. But so wh when we're thinking about uh, about rewards, it's okay to to give uh, uh, rewards like like chocolates or sweets or money or whatever. But when do we give it? And, and and how do we give it and how relevant do we make it do do we, do we make all rewards for success something that they can actually eat or put in their pocket or are there other rewards that we can give them so sometimes a, 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 a praise is is a reward in itself isn't it definitely mm. definitely mm. Uh, achievement mm. achievement the sense of achievement is is one of the biggest rewards mm. for children and for adults alike mm. Mm. so so if mm. your child comes with the, with the, with the messed up i don't know puzzle or something that looks really ugly but they're really happy about doing it mm. praise them for it yes. okay because they 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 are they are seeking this uh, this mm. praise and what you're doing is not you're just um, uh, praising them for what for mm. for the thing for this ugly thing that you mm. see in front of you but you're building this frame that achievement in itself is a reward feeling or getting the sense of achievement is a reward um, now as far as to what to be rewarded and 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 the the intensity of the reward or how much reward do we mm. give uh, the parents need to sit down and 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 write down a list mm. of behaviors. And so, uh, sometimes a, a great reward could be I'm going to spend more time with you. Of course, I'm, I'm going to do something with uh, you that you love. You know what? A so. bedtime story. Mm. Uh, yeah. Your reward is an extra okay. bedtime story tonight. Let's make this our bedtime story now. Unfortunately, we have to uh, to wrap it here. And okay. uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hisham Hassan, your semantics uh, trainer. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Um, uh, thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for watching um, Family uh, Issues. And thanks to our dear callers from uh, Nigeria and Canada for participating in this um, episode. Um, now, uh, starting from February, uh, inshallah, uh, we will be uh, having um, uh, a renewal here in, in the program. Uh, you'll find uh, a new uh, design, a new set, and inshallah also uh, uh, new uh, ideas. We hope that you uh, uh, do join us on our next season starting from the 1st of February, uh, inshallah. And please do uh, send us uh, your uh, comments on, uh, and suggestions uh, mm -hmm. on family issues at huda.tv uh, uh, until we meet again thank you for watching assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you are never alone So now, as you long for your past Prepare for your future But knowing nothing's gonna last You see, this life is but a road A straight and narrow path To our final abode so travel well, O oh Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And always remember that you are never...